person who surrenders his or her life to Jesus Christ will never be the same again. Personally, everything finds new meaning and purpose and it's as if you become alive for the very first time. But it was never God's intention for this new reality to be kept a secret or to be a private matter. Being a Christian whose whole life has been changed implies that you share your new life with other believers. Now this gathering is what being church is all about. Now in Matthew 16 verse 18, Jesus responds to Peter who makes a powerful declaration of who Jesus is by announcing the church's existence. Now this Greek word for church, ecclesia, means the gathering of faithful people. Now Jesus makes it very clear that we are supposed to function together as Christ followers. One of the metaphors used several times in the Bible New Testament that explains how the church should function is a family. With God as Heavenly Father, we all become part of a spiritual family or a household. We all belong to one another and serve God together. Now here Paul writes to the church in Ephesus and we read in Ephesians 2 verse 19. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens, along with all of God's holy people, your members of God's family. The early church is a strong example of how people gave expression to this new family reality. We read in Acts 2 verse 44 to 46, And all the believers met together in one place. And shared everything they had. They, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day. Met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. It is evident that the church understood that it now functions as a tightly knit family who, who shares their faith in God in a, in a very close and a personal way with other believers. A second metaphor used to describe the church is that we belong to a body. The church is in effect the body and Jesus is the head. We read in Romans 12 verse 4 to 5, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a specific function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Several New Testament scriptures explain how, as a body part, you cannot exist on your own. You can only find real significance in the way you connect and interact with other Christ followers. The aim is to become a healthy, functional body where each part's unique calling and function is recognized and celebrated. This defines how the church operates as a unity which fulfills God's purposes on earth. Now, a strong word that embodies someone who really understands church and, and fully become part of it is the word partner. Like in any company or firm, a partner takes full responsibility for the care, the well-being and the health of that organization. Someone who engages others in church as family and becomes a full participating member of the body will be a true partner, partnering with God and other believers to give expression to church the way Jesus intended. A very important question we need to ask is, how will we know when church is functioning effectively? How will we know if the body of Christ is healthy and, and fully functional? Now, I believe it has to happen in three ways. The first fruit of a healthy church is when people really have a growing desire to know God more and to, to better understand His Word, the Bible. Now, these scriptures beautifully state the following. It says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11, Search for the Lord, and for His strength, continually seek Him. In Psalms 119, verse 105, we read, Your Word is a lamp to guide my feet and a, and a light for my path. So, as you grow in your knowledge of God and His Word, you mature spiritually and enjoy the constant revelation of, of who God is. Your relationship with Him intensifies as you walk with Him and, and learn to enjoy His presence wherever you are. The working of the Holy Spirit and regular prayer is part of this journey with the Lord. Now, the second fruit of a healthy church is a recognizable love 
for other people. In the very well-known verse in the Bible, in John 3 verse 16, we see how the incredible love of the Father caused him to send and sacrifice his own son, Jesus, so that salvation can become a reality to all people. So this compassionate love for one another becomes a natural outflow of a church who is really catching the heart of God. In Matthew 22 verse 39, Jesus teaches that love for our fellow man is as important as our devoted love for God. In 1 John 4 verse 8, we read that someone who do not love others don't really know God since he is love. We therefore need to be such a spiritual family that will embrace others with the love of God, which we received when we accepted Jesus. So loving others the same way Jesus did is a, is a clear indication of a healthy church. The third fruit of a healthy church is when every person fully discovers that godly calling and actively engages the community with his love. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 4 verse 1, he says, Therefore I, Paul writes, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. So everybody part, effectively fulfilling its function, will result in a healthy body or a healthy church, bringing hope and light into the world. Every person's talents and abilities then get used by God to serve and uplift our environment. Now, th this gets expression within the church, but also in every space we find ourselves, being at your home, at your workplace, basically everywhere that you go. I believe great things are possible when you are a follower of Christ. God empowers you and me to bring restoration to those who are emotionally broken and, and to share godly salvation to those who are spiritually lost and to bring healing to people's pain. In this manner, the church will be healthy and in a beautiful way bring glory to the name of Jesus.